Alien vs Predator the game series. Before I get into it, I want to make a shout out to the Michael Myers fanatic. Go check out his horror movie reviews right here. Okay, in these, I'm going to be spoiling the Alien and Predator movies left and right. I'm expecting that if you play the games, you've already watched the movies. Trust me, that is the better way to go. Starting as usual with the concept. As far as I know, fairly recently a new AVP game came out, but I don't really know anything about it, and I haven't played it, so this is for the first two games and the expansion pack to the second game. It's pretty obvious to have these two space creatures battle each other, there are iconic outer space killers, and they're even owned by the same company. Both had at least one really good movie made about them, and also quite important, they're not too similar to one another. You know, this isn't like pitting Michael Myers against Jason Voorhees. They're both big, masked killers who walk around with a knife. It just wouldn't be as interesting. The Predator is the ultimate hunter, and the Alien is like our worst nightmare of a bug. Like a giant cockroach or something. A man-sized insect with all the effectiveness and driven by pure instinct and with the numbers of an insect we know of. Oh, also, the Marines are there too. I'm kidding. Plenty of attention is paid to the Marine side in both games. But let's be honest, the human beings are about the least interesting side in this. That's one of the reasons the two movies were so lousy. One out of thousands of reasons. What really makes these games work, because normally licensed games are garbage. What makes them work is that they really take these creatures seriously. They don't soften them up to make the game work better. In these games, if you are attacked by an alien and it gets a second or two to slash at you, you will be dead. Unless you're playing on the easiest difficulty, in which case you're really cheating yourself. You get spotted by a predator, you see that red glow emanating from its shoulder cannon, you're gonna be dead a second later if you don't immediately take him out. And yes, if you're an alien and you stand in front of a marine for a second or two just letting him shoot at you, you will be dead. In these games, fighting the other creatures really means trouble. They are first-person shooters, but it's not like your average FPS where you can just mow the enemies down. Don't get me wrong, I have no problem with those FPSs. I enjoy them quite a lot. But it just isn't right for these creatures. Another thing that really helps is these were early cases of shooting games where it really made a difference where you aim. You know, most FPSs have the thing of shoot them in the head, won't take very many bullets to take them down, shoot them in the chest, more or less same thing, slightly less maybe. But in this one, you can shoot limbs off aliens. In fact, you're willing to take the advice from that douche in Starship Troopers. If you shoot them in the arms or legs, they can still attack you. Shoot the legs off an alien, it'll just come crawling at you. It might move slower. But as long as it has a head, and is moving, it ain't dead. Part of taking these creatures very seriously and not softening them up is of course the acid blood. And yes, when you kill an alien in one of these games, there will be spur spurts of acid blood. If you walk over a dead body of an alien, you're gonna lose health. Potentially a lot. And yes, if you are killing a predator, you'll want to make sure it's dead. Or it might take you out with that explosion. You know, the self-destruct device. And yes, an alien can be fairly quickly killed if you hit it. These games are also very impressive for doing a lot to actually make the sides equal. And to some extent they get there. I'd say they do better in the second one than the first one. The aliens can climb walls, of course, and as with all games that allow you to do that, not everything is ideal to climb. Flat surfaces, surfaces that are very uneven or very small, not so much. 
In both games, when you're playing as the alien, when the civilians panic, they make it very difficult for you to headbite them, which is a little annoying. Both games hold about what you'd expect from something dealing with these two creatures, again, based on the films. And there's this great kind of picking up the slack kind of thing going on, where the first has something, the second doesn't, and vice versa. Neither game is entirely flawless, but they also aren't exactly the same thing. The second one isn't only an upgrade. They are two separate entities, and you don't really need to have played the first to understand the second. The games just let you pretend to be all three races. Great and fun FPS games. Regardless of what species you play as, you will fight both of the other two. Of course, as the alien, you do kill far more human beings than any of the aliens in any of the movies do. Ditto for the marine. And the Predator is kind of like the one of Predator 2, you know, more slaughtering than hunting. But it's still fun. Moving on to the first Alien vs. Predator game, and no, I don't have a cover. I've recently begun the habit of starting these reviews with a brief introduction to the plot. I can't really do that this time, because there almost is no plot to this game whatsoever. You're basically put in a series of situations that are very reminiscent of the films, honestly with locations plucked right out of the films, and no real reason is given. The levels aren't particularly connected to one another. And admittedly, and admittedly, when you're done, you don't really feel any sense of accomplishment other than that you beat the challenge. Every level as the marine feels like you're one of the marines and aliens. As the alien, you feel like the alien and alien, alien? Or like one of the aliens in Aliens. And as the predator, you feel more or less like the one in Predator 2. This game really does not give you much help. It doesn't really succeed in making you feel that much more powerful than your enemies, but you are sufficiently equipped to take them out and complete the levels. For example, as the Predator, you never feel like you can take everyone in a level out without breaking a sweat, like the Predator of the first movie, but you do still win. The game is like if a doctor tells you that you will die in the next five or ten minutes if you don't get the cure, and the cure is about a kilometer or a mile, for the Americans, away. Basically, from start to finish, you are running and just gunning it, trying desperately not to die before you reach the end for almost every single level. It's worth noting that every single level in this game can actually be beaten within five or ten minutes. If you know what to do, and you do it. In other words, the first time you play it, you're not going to have any clue where to go, because the game really does not do very much to tell you. As you progress further and further, each time you die, you'll have to start all over because there is no saving in this game. It only saves when you complete a level. You'll eventually be able to complete a level. By this time, you may have spent hours on this 10-minute level. There aren't a lot of levels either, but once you've completed the game, you'll unlock some bonus levels. The alien gets five levels, and the Predator and the Marine get six levels, and all three get five bonus levels, and each bonus level is a level from one of the other species where you have different objectives, and you might start and end the level somewhere else. This is especially cool for the Predator and the Marine, because when playing alien levels, the Predator gets a grappling hook, slightly clumsily done, but it works, and the Marine gets a jetpack. And yes, it is as much fun as it sounds.